Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Deep Understanding of Research Papers. Today, um, I am going to uh, present a new tutorial uh, called Joint Speech Recognition and Speaker Diarization via Sequence Transduction. And uh, this paper was published in uh, la uh, published last month, but uh, uh, yesterday uh, Google uh, released a blog on this paper explaining how they are trying to do the uh, speech recognition and speech uh, speaker diarization in a single model uh, using uh, uh, RNN transducers. Uh, so uh, this paper is coming from Google and uh, one of the author is Egan Salto is a very well known person in uh, speech community and uh, he's been working on speech related problem from uh, 2000, uh, 2001 and uh, he was in IBM and now is uh, working in Google. Uh, and uh, the tutorial is going to cover the overview of the paper and uh, we'll see uh, how to do diarization via sequence transduction uh, which is nothing but uh, predicting both uh, speech speech predicting both the uh, transcript and the speaker ids uh, and uh, <coughs> we'll see the experiments and finally we'll see some results so what is this joint training of speech recognition and speaker diarization uh, let me just explain what is speech recognition so speech recognition is basically let's say you have utterance and uh, whatever you are you are, you are speaking in that utterance is fed, uh, is fed to something called a speech recognition system or ASR, you get the transcript like for example, hello world, right? And what is uh, diarization, in diarization you have audio and uh, you feed it to diarization system, let's call it as SD, speaker diarizer and uh, what the system predicts is it, t it tells from what time to what time uh, speaker 1 spoke and what time to what time speaker 2 spoke and what time to what time speaker 3 spoke. So basically it's called uh, whom spoke when, uh, the speaker diarization thing is called whom spoke when uh, and uh, the speech recognition is just what the person spoke, right? Just a transcript. Now, uh, classically, what people do is people build a separate speech recognition system. People build a separate uh, diarization system, and um, somehow they combine them in uh, some pipeline so that if the audio of uh, let's say 15 minute comes, they pass it through speaker diarization which gives you the timestamps of what when sp what speaker spoke at what time, and you can use those segments and feed them to speech recognition to know what is being spoken. That is a classical way of doing it. But uh, these guys are, uh, uh, they have their own limitations because uh, whatever errors you make in speaker diarization will get propagated to the speaker recognition system because today speaker diarization is very hard. I mean, uh, if the data is a bit, little bit uh, noisy, then forget it. You won't get good DR at all. So that's why people recently started a challenge called uh, Die Hard Challenge. So that means the diarization is hard and they are trying to make the speaker diarization systems better. But uh, till is still it's a research phase, but uh, they have their own complications. Like people uh, has to use uh, some sort of uh, unsupervised or semi-supervised ideas to build the speaker diarization system because you can't get the labels. I mean, you can get the label, but uh, getting a perfect frame, mapping it to, uh, I mean, telling, okay, this frame belongs to this particular speaker is uh, doing that annotation is very hard. But recent people always have used uh, unsupervised and semi-supervised methods. But they have their own limitation because of the uh, context, I mean, uh, length of the audio and all. That's a big complicated thing. So that's why it's a bit hard. But this error, so whatever we make in speaker diarization shouldn't go and affect the ASR. That's a bad thing because since they are connected in cascade, the errors will get propagated. And uh, even if your ASR is very good, then uh, it should not get lower uh, WR or higher WR because of this. So that's why these guys have uh, done this where you have, you just, you just combine the speaker diarization along with speaker recognition or speech recognition. So uh, that's the idea. So we'll see how they are combined and how actually it works. That's a very interesting part. Um, uh, uh, so, so we'll see that in the coming slide. So basically they, what they do is they pick up this uh, linguistic and acoustic cues uh, to infer the speaker roles. Like uh, basically here they are not, they have maybe two different speakers, that's all in the audio because it's a conversation where the, uh, one person is conversation, having conversation with another person. It's a medical data, doctor having a conversation with the patient. So there are only two speakers. So all you have to figure out is, uh, all the system has to figure out is what is what sentence is uh, spoken by whom. Right? Like, uh, is it spoken by a direct uh, doctor or is it uh, spoken by a patient? Right? So if you have the linguistic, uh, linguistic knowledge of the text, then I think it's very easy. We'll see the, we'll see, uh, I'll, I'll explain what is my uh, intuition about this paper. But anyway, that is the whole point. So it just uh, predicts uh, the transcript along with the 
the speaker uh, ids basically so basically the gives the at, at what time the person spoke and all so we'll see that and uh, for the data they have used uh, some large uh, medical conversation data set uh, within google there are around 15000 hours of data very huge data and uh, compared to baseline they get very good diarization results uh, and even word, word they actually they have uh, there is not there is no der they are not measuring wr they are not they are not measuring wr they are measuring something called w der is a new metric sort of uh, takes care of both uh, der and wr and creates uh, one matrix we'll see them I mean, they are getting very good accuracy we'll see that in the coming slides so uh, uh, proposed approach so basically what is written in this paper or what is the idea of this paper we'll explain uh, we'll uh, explain in four different sections uh, first we'll understand what is the problem statement like i said uh, uh, we'll see why these guys have built this uh, then we'll see the something called rn and transducers uh, which were uh, invented a uh, long time ago but people have been using it for speech recognition and these guys have also used it and uh, we'll see the data set and also a new evaluation metric these guys have invent introduced uh, not these guys like some other ones but uh, not very popular but i'll just explain because it's not much i mean very popular so uh, coming to the problem statement what they are trying to do is this uh, this is the baseline system basically you can think of this as a classical system so in the classical system, what you have is you have audio, you feed it to ASR and you feed it to speech speaker and diarization, ASR gives you some words and diarization, will gives you, give, give you, okay, what is the timestamp, who is the speaker and all. Then you have to apply this uh, reconciliation and uh, map, okay, which word is which speaker and all. Uh, this is how it is done before, I mean, um, classically, but uh, what you want to do is this, you want to take the audio feed it to joint ASR SD system, it's a single model, single neural network, gives you words, speakers in one shot. Like it's sort of like uh, you are predicting the words and you are predicting speakers. So basically if speaker one is predicted here, like for example speaker one is doctor, this word was spoken by doctor, speaker two is patient, these two words are spoken by this one and like this, right, it's very easy. This is how they want to do. Like for example, there is an example here. Let's say uh, some the, somebody says, hello, Dr. Jekyll. Uh, this is actually spoken by a patient. So the system marks it as uh, speaker patient. And then hello, Mr. Hyde, what uh, what brings you here? It's spoken by obviously, by the context you know, okay, who is, who is speaking because it's a doctor speaking. Then I'm struggling again with some bipolar disorder. Obviously, this patient speaks and the system predicts. So what I believe is the system is trying to find out these linguistic features, uh, linguistic uh, content are basically the context of the transcript and trying to predict who is the speaker but it may not be exactly looking at to looking into the acoustic cues where uh, basically it is not be able to understand who is doctor who is uh, uh, patient just by looking at the audio without even understanding what is the text or without even understanding what is the uh, what is the content or what is the phonetic content in the audio usually what we do is uh, in the case of classical speaker dialysis system we just feed the raw audio, we won't tell the system what is the actual content. The system will figure out the speaker features, speaker level features and cluster them and tells you, okay, all these features are similar uh, in the clustering. So this clusters is basically belongs to a particular speaker, but it won't actually look into the linguistic content. But this model I believe is looking into the context or what is being spoken and that's how it is doing it. That is my own hypothesis, but anyway. <coughs> so uh, that is the idea of this, uh, paper i mean uh, that is the idea of uh, this problem problem statement is this M next we'll see what is this sequence uh, transducer or rnn transducer so the reason why people started using this transducer is because uh, back in uh, 2015 and all this uh, ctc based models were very famous so you may be knowing about uh, deep speech uh, not just deep speech any uh, any ctc based model maybe just some rnn ctc model so basically you'll have a CT, some sequence, trans, uh, sequence alignment problem you have here, for example, uh, finding out sp uh, transcript of the speech and all. So people used to use RNN CTC back in that time and uh, then people introduced sequence, tra sequence, sequence models and all, but anyway. So when that is introduced, the CTC had this problem of uh, conditional independency. Where basically, let's say you are predicting YT, this prediction of YT does not depend on the previous or the future uh, predictions. That's why it's called conditional independence assumption. This, uh, this, this is the conditional independence assumption the RNN, uh, the CTC model makes. 
to avoid this uh, these guys introduce something called uh, transducers basically they take care of the previous predictions along with uh, while predicting the current predictions like for example if you look at this system this is the picture taken from a paper called uh, uh, sequence transducers for speech chinese speech recognition and uh, so when you feed a uh, input xt at time t which is just for example a audio frame and it takes it goes into encoder and encoder gets sim this something called uh, ht encoder which is basically the hidden representation at that particular time step right so that is one representation and i may be might have predicted the previous uh, time steps output so basically the previous time steps output is called y u minus 1 so that goes as input to the something called prediction network so this network so this is the previous time steps this goes as input here and it gives you something called hu prediction so so these two are combined somehow we'll see how they are combined and then put it into joint network now the system uh, the basically the rn and ctc model is able to take care of the previous predictions or it is actually looking into the previous prediction while predicting the current time steps output right so when you are predicting PYT, you are actually looking into P uh, T minus Y T minus one and along with XT. It's just not depend on XT, but also depends on the previous output. So this is how it was introduced. I mean, this is how the transducer was made because so to take care of this conditional independence problem. So <coughs> this is the whole idea. I mean, uh, the equations you can see here. There is encoder is taking X and predicting this one. and uh, basically these outputs are se sequence of symbols like maybe characters or uh, subwords uh, like for example abcd subwords kind of thing so they go as input to some embedding and uh, this embedding will go as input to the prediction because these are one hot embedding one not encoding so these embeddings will go as input to the prediction and they get edge spread and how do you get joint this one this is here so this was basically some sort of affine transformations of these two and then some tanich uh, transformation then you have some normal uh, softmax prediction predicting the probability over all the symbols so k is just uh, some of the one of the symbol like uh, like characters a b c d uh, question mark and all so some say, limited set of symbols which you want to predict and uh, <coughs> since it's a ctc model then uh, this this makes sense because you have multiple alignment and you want to use viterbi's uh, forward backward algorithm to train the model this is just uh, standard ctc algorithm training so this is how rnn transducer work so in in your case in our case you are feeding the xt which is basically the audio waveforms uh, audio waveform converted into features then you are predicting some symbols characters or words or subwords right as simple as that so you could ask me why didn't they use uh, sequence sequence model even i don't know because uh, they could have easily used sequence sequence model here because it's the same thing uh, but anyway they have used uh, sequence uh, rnn transducers and uh, coming to the data sets so this is a new data set these guys have uh, i mean it's not introduced they are not giving it to public it's just their own data set i'll just give you the statistics of this data set they have around 100000 audio data audio utterances with 15 uh, totally makes around 15000 uh, hours of audio data they are all conversations between uh, patients and uh, uh, doctors right for around 10 minutes and uh, the transcription basically they or how they have is, is they have some words and their uh, speaker turns are all marked uh, while doing the labeling and uh, you can ask uh, what if someone else comes other than doctor and patient so they just map it to the closest ones if a nurse comes they map it to doctor if uh, one of the relatives of the patient comes they map it to the speaker or the uh, the uh, patient right and uh, they have uh, this audio data is very uh, i mean high quality audio data like they have uh, sampling rate of 8 or 16000 and uh, they have test utterances which are uh, hold, held out data sets held out utterances of 500 and uh, for both <coughs> development and uh, evaluation and uh, there there is no overlap between physicians between three sets so that is one thing and if they are audio if, how, when they are training the model they chunk the audios into 15 seconds right Uh, next we will see the evaluation metric they have uh, they are using there is they are using something called word diarization error rate is sort of they don't they are, since they are combined they are training joint model they can't they can make dr and they can make wr but uh, since it's combined so they are making both dr and wr into single w w d e r and uh, this is how the uh, equation looks i'm running out of time i'll just uh, skip it next uh, <coughs> we will see the experiments so for the experiments they use uh, for the input features xt 
they are, they use uh, this 80 dimensional uh, so 80 dimensional uh, feature log filter, filter bank energy feature and uh, they use morphemes which are sort of like subwords uh, as outputs not just words or not just characters they use these subwords which are uh, you know morphemes and uh, they use the time delay neural network to uh, reduce the time resolution from 10 millisecond to 80 millisecond because these are computed at 10 millisecond ultimately you want to uh, reduce the time time resolution tdns can easily do it and uh, they obviously they use the ctc uh, model uh, and uh, so this is uh, ctc model with the time resolution reduced because uh, to increase the speed up in training and in financing and they train it with uh, stochastic gradient descent uh, and they train it on 128 TPUs, so very huge, and uh, it takes it, it converges within two days, it seems, uh, even with 128 TPUs. Anyway, so results uh, so WDR, if you use the just baseline, like separate, separate models for uh, speaker derivation and speech recognition, the joint uh, this is how, this is the WDR you get, but uh, joint ASR to ASD gets you this much, it's crazily uh, good. And uh, if you see the WR, actually this baseline is a little bit better than joint one. And uh, these are just uh, deletion, insertion, the substitution things. Don't worry about that. Then how does the number of hours of audio data affect the WDR? So this is how it is. So WR converges like this, WDR also. In fact, if you see after, uh, I mean, after 9,000 hours of data, there is not much improvement in WDR, but there is a huge amount of improvement in WDR. So, so that's all for this uh, tutorial. Uh, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And uh, if you like this tutorial, please give a thumbs up for more uh, video content. Thank you.